What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us today. Before we jump into the message, we wanted to let you know that we have a ton of great content for the whole family. We have great videos for your small children in the Little Linkland section, for your kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. We'd love to be a blessing to your whole family, so check out these videos when you can. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. Now, let's get started. Today, today we're going to talk about unity in the community. And of course, this is Serve Month. Unity is something that is just really dear to my heart. I can remember going to a leadership conference many years ago, over 20-something years ago, and the keynote speaker made this statement that I just never forgot. And the statement was, if God planted a church in a community, and then that church left that community, and the community never knew the church was there, that is a tragedy. And that just stuck with me. When I first gave my life to Christ, uh, I was doing my devotion, and the devotion was from Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4. And, and I highlighted in, a, in parentheses, almost put a bar around it, uh, one of the verses that I'm getting ready to read today. And I wrote in this little red Bible, which I still have to this day. I, I read the Bible so much and wrote in it so much that the pages are just, I can't carry it anymore. I just kind of lived in that thing. And I wrote in there that if I ever pastored a church, this is how I would pastor it. And these things just still stick with me to this day. So let's talk about unity as a part of history. Or really another way to say that, say that is unity is his story. So unity within our churches and communities has been stretched and challenged over these past few years. The world has become more polarizing, causing people to take sides on a whole host of issues. Should I wear a mask? Should I not wear a mask? The vast vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. You know, pro-life, all, all of this. How I many know all of this is meant to divide? And if we're not careful, it will creep into the church. And then you'll have in the church people that are divided over issues that have nothing to do with Christ. And we have to just be real careful of this. Should I go to church? Should I stay home? Is it safe to go to church? I, I personally think the safest place to be is in the will of God. Anybody else in here agree with that? I think that is the absolute safest place to be in the world is in the will of God. And so we just have to be careful. For God to move in our churches and communities, we need to be united. So no matter what's happening in the culture all around us, I'm convinced that if we just demonstrate the unity of the early church, then we will manifest the power of the early church. A lot of us want the power, but how many know the power doesn't manifest where there's not unity? So unity is so important to seeing more of the gifts of the Spirit operating in a church. We really have to be all on the same accord and all on the same page. Let's look at our foundation text. Our foundation text is in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, and I want to read it out of the Passion Translation. And it reads this way. It says, all the believers were of one mind and heart. I'm reading Acts chapter 4, verse 32, out of the Passion Translation. Of course, it goes up on the screen, but I pray that you look at it on your devices or whatever uh, you're using on today. It says, all the believers were one in mind and heart. I want to read that again. All the believers were one in mind and heart. Not some of the believers, but all of the believers were one in mind and heart. And I love this. Selfishness was not a part of their community. For they shared everything they had with one another. First, I believe that that's what church should look like. No one should lack anything when your family is five, four to 5,000 people strong. Watch this. 
And when those four to 5,000 people strong operate in one mind and one heart, then the community that they live in shouldn't lack anything either. Now, I wish I could have served in the military. That's really a, a long, that's really a, a, a something I wish I could have done. Uh, it's just something I admire anyone that has served our country and sacrificed uh, for the freedoms that we have today. I salute you and your bravery. You are a true hero in my eyes. I get to stand here. I'm standing on your shoulders because you pay the price for me to stand up here on this stage. If you served our country in any capacity, can you give them a big round of applause? Stand up on your feet. You served our country in any capacity. Come on, Linked Up Church. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I have a short video, media department. I think I want to show that video right here because I just think it, it really speaks to and the timing is just right. And so if you have that video queued up, I want you all to watch this video because it really will help set up everything else I'll need to say on today. The Navy SEALs are one of the highest performing organizations on the planet. And a former Navy SEAL was asked, who makes it through BUDS? Who makes it through the selection process to become a SEAL? And he said, I can't tell you who gets through, who makes it, but I can tell you the kind of people who don't make it. He said the star college athletes that never have been really tested to the core of their being, none of them make it through. He said the preening leaders who like to delegate everything, none of them make it through. He said the big tough guys that come in with huge muscles covered in tattoos and want to prove to everyone how tough they are, none of them make it through. He said some of the guys that make it through are skinny and scrawny. He said, some of the guys who make it through, you will see them shivering out of fear. He said, but every single one of them who makes it through, when they're emotionally exhausted, when they're physically exhausted, some way, somehow, they're able to dig down deep inside themselves to find the energy to help the person next to them. Service. Service. Giving to another, having their back, is what makes the highest performing teams in the world. Not their strength and not their intelligence. It's their willingness to be there for each other. Nothing I really need to add to that. Other than that is the church that God is desiring to build. One that looks out for the person on either side of them and is unwilling to leave somebody behind because they got injured or they got hurt. Hello, somebody. Or their faith wasn't as strong as yours or whatever the case is. This is the level of unity that God wants in this community. If you have those slides, I just want to read on a small scale what this looks like when just 367 of the four to 5,000 people are willing to go out and think about someone outside of themselves. Think about the person next to them. Think about the person that doesn't have what they have. Think about the person that is less fortunate than they are. These are some of the accomplishments, and, and I think the slides will go up on the screen, but I'll read them. Currently, our goal is to have 400 unique people serving this month. As of today, we have 367. Can we give ourselves a big round of applause for that? Huh? On yesterday, we had 201 volunteers come out to serve. At Reflections of Trinity, we made food boxes and distributed those. At Reflections of Trinity Warehouse, we made 12 large containers, and we, we, well, we sorted 12 large containers of clothes. At Reflections of Trinity, we sorted 4,153 bags of food that we made to be given to children that are less fortunate. At the Calvary Children's Home, wooden decks and steps were replaced. Simple needs, items, clothes, furniture uh, were sorted and organized. At the Spouter, Powder Springs Nursing Home, people passed out goodie bags and toiletries. At Open Hand Atlanta, Atlanta we delivered items to the needy. And then these are some of the comments, folks, that the leaders of these organizations made about Linked Up Church. This is Brian Busby, campus director at the Calvary Children's Home. He said, good morning. I cannot wait to tell you what an immense blessing you all were. We feel like he heaven landed on us last week in the form of Linked Up Church. You lifted so many burdens. Could not have done better if you have tried. Divine timing. We love y'all. If your mission was to radically help children without parents, mission accomplished. 
crazy awesome people you are. Lori Wong at Reflections of Trinity said, you guys are a tremendous blessing. You completely sort it in one day what normally takes an entire month to accomplish. <laughs> Brenda Rose, founder of Simple Needs, said, we're excited, static. This is the most volunteers we've had since before the pandemic. Can we give our volunteers, Linked Up Church, a big round of applause? Come on, I don't want you to give a little one. I want you to give a big one, right? Come on, I want you to give a big round of applause for those volunteers. We salute you and thank you. And we honor you today. Thank you for your time, your commitment, and your service. And although we thank God for that, how many of you know the universe is a lot bigger than that? Right? And so we believe everyone can do something. Let's talk about right now, how can we main, maintain unity when the surrounding forces are trying to tear us apart? Okay? And you're going to hear me begin to minister things. And I'm not going to be political. I'm going to be biblical. Yeah. Right? right? And because these things need to be talked about. Right? And at the end of the day, once it's presented, then you have a choice to take a side. Not a political side, but a biblical side. It's not today, but they're coming. I've been doing my homework and studying, and I know these things need to be talked about in church because God is going to hold the shepherds accountable for what the people did or did not know. All right, now, for today, how do we maintain this unity? Let's look at five quick ways to have unity in our community. Number one is we have to develop an attitude of acceptance. We have to develop an attitude of acceptance. We have to learn how to accept people where they are and not where we want them to be. All right? We have to learn how to not major on the minor issues. You don't need to insist that everyone agrees on every minor detail. Let's look at Romans chapter 14, verse 1, and I'm going to read it out of the NIV version first. Develop an attitude of acceptance. I want this church to look like what heaven will look like. Amen. People from every race, creed, color, and nationality. Yeah. Right? And so when people come in that don't look like you, we should accept and receive them. Yeah. And go out of our way to love on them. Yeah. Look at what Paul said here in, in Romans 14.1. He says, accept. The word accept means to receive the, the ones who are weak in the faith or whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. So notice that Paul recognizes there are disputable matters. So it's clear that we won't agree on everything, and we don't need to in order to have unity in our communities. Right? What we need to agree on is that Jesus is Lord. See, the reality is I have two children, and both of them may end up marrying other, and I welcome that. Because the issue for me is not the color of an individual's skin. The issue for me is the Lord of their lives. And I'd rather them marry someone that has made Jesus the Lord of their lives than a heathen that's the same color that they are. Come on, I, I need a little, bit of, a little bit better amen in here. L like this beautiful couple right here. Just stand up for a moment. This is a beautiful couple right here. It just looks good on them. Just turn around and just let her. They're just recently engraved. That looks good, right? Now, I'm going to tell you, th that looks good to me not because of physical outward appearance. That looks good to me because they both have made Jesus Christ their personal Lord and Savior. Right? So I don't think God wants to all anything. So we have to develop an attitude of acceptance. Paul acknowledged that there will be disputable matters, but don't major on those. The Passion Translation reads this way. Offer an open hand, same verse, of fellowship to welcome every true believer. Even though their faith may be weak and immature, and refuse to engage in debates with them concerning nothing more than opinions. So, I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but it's a lot I could work with with this. 
Right? So notice, there always will be people who come in whose faith is not at the level that yours at. That's not the issue there. He says, but refuse to get into debates with them concerning nothing more than opinions. So let me tell you just very quickly how you separate that. The moment you sit down and share the Word of God with someone, and their response becomes, but what about my situation? And what about this? And what about that? And we both just looked at the truth together. The moment they go into all of that, then how many of you know at that point we just got to love them and, and let them run with their opinions, but we stick with the Word of God. But we still receive them and we still love on them, right? But your opinions have nothing to do with the Word of God, right? And He will take your situation if you will believe Him and mold it into exactly what He said if you'll just trust Him and allow Him to do that. So that's just where we separate that. Once it gets into a debate and people want to start putting their opinions in there, you know, I look at it this way. Opinions are like butts. Everybody has one, right? And so forget about opinions. What did God say, right? And let God settle every dispute that we have, right? And when God can't settle the dispute, then we don't value the same things. Number two, let's all focus on a common purpose. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, in the Passion Translation, read this way. Focus on our common purpose. It says, I urge you, my brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. I urge you, my brothers and sisters, for the sake of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to agree to live in unity with one another, and put to rest any division that attempts to tear us, to, uh, tear us apart or tear you apart. Be restored as one unified body, living in perfect harmony. Form a consistent choreography among yourselves, having a common perspective with shared values. So the way to have this level of unity is to have a common perspective with shared values. How many of y'all are a member of Linked Up Church? Raise your hand if you are a member. You've joined this church. You've taken your classes. Okay. So what our common perspective should be is the vision that God's given us here. And that vision is to connect people to God, to family, to purpose, and community. Just like today, people will respond when we give invitations, right? And so we get people connected to God through salvation, rededication, coming back to God, water baptism, right? We get people connected to family through connect groups. So every member should be a part of a connect group right? or purpose, right? How do we help people fulfill their purpose? Every member should serve on a dream team. Right? Or do one or the other. Members should be either in a connect group or on a dream team. You, should, you notice how really three amens went there, and all of them either serve on a dream team or are in a connect group. But everybody else went. We supposed to do what? What's the vision of this church? Right? Connect people to God, family, purpose. Watch this now. And community. My heart is to the vision that God's given me. It's his heart that he's just trying to get through me is to impact this community in ways that no other church has ever impacted a community since church began. Folks, I'm talking about people can go to hell, but they can't live in Powder Springs and get there. Come on, I need a little bit better amen than that. I'm talking about if it's food, if it's jobs, if it's whatever it is, they know that there's a church in this community that cares about them, loves them, and is willing to do something about their situation. Okay? That should be our common perspective and our shared values. And every member should be on that journey. Right? So every member has to get beyond just going to church. Thank God that you come to church. But how I many know God called you to be and do much more? So we've got to focus on a common purpose because focusing on a common purpose is what leads to unity. So imagine if we would have had 4,000 people out in the community yesterday. 
Fox News would have had to come. CBS News would have had to come. Everyone would have wanted to know what is going on in Powder Springs. They are eradicating poverty in that community. They are eradicating homelessness in that community. They are eradicating uh, everything in that community because the believers are rallying together. So look what 376 people did. What can 4,000 do? What can 5,000 do? How many of y'all glad you came to church today? You know, I, I sense we're making the devil mad. Can we just give Jesus another big round of a hallelujah, glory to God? I, I just sense he's, a, I sense he's a little upset that somebody is bold enough to say something like this. Number three, control your tongue. That's the one right there. That's the one. My God, what did I say there? Control your tongue. Ooh, ooh. Well, let's talk about what that means. Don't let gossip, go, gossip fester in this community. And I want you to type that in online. No gossip at Linked Up Church. Whatever device you're, you're reading and you're looking on right now, type it in. No gossip at Linked Up Church. If you're on your device right now, type that in. Gossip is a deal killer. Control your tongue. When you listen to gossip, you become a partner to gossip. The moment you say, what, 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 what? Did you? So somebody come to you and say, did you hear about what such and such did? No, tell me, what did they do? <laughs> I mean, you've just entered into partnership with that gossip. Let's look at what it, gossip is by definition. Now, again, I grew up a little differently. They called it something different. But snitches always ended up. So what is gossip? Gossip is when you're sharing a problem or criticism, listen to this, with someone who is neither part of the problem nor part of the solution. So, so in other words, me and Johnny got into it. Me and Johnny, we want nose to nose. Minister Johnny and I, we had an issue. But then Johnny decides to go and talk to Joni about what happened with us. How I many know now Johnny has entered into gossip, Minister Johnny, right? And now if Joni listens to that and embraces that, she's become a partner to it, right? And this is what tears churches up. There are people that are not a part of this church today based off of what happened to somebody else that, that they told them about that, and they, they did what? <laughs> With one side of the story and wouldn't change their whole lives over something they had nothing to do with. Let's look at a couple of verses on this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13 out of the Passion Translation reads, the wicked will get trapped by their words of gossip, slander, and lies. But the righteous, before the righteous, honesty is its own defense. And so I learned, right, that your character will always outlast accusations. So if you'll just be honest, let people do what they do. And your honesty and your integrity will always be your greatest defense. Not your ability to go and try to defend yourself or get back at somebody. Just say what it was, what happened, and if people choose to believe that, praise God. If they don't choose to believe that, praise God. But let honesty be your defense because notice the gossip and the slander is going to put them in a trap. See, gossip is like drinking poison. You drinking the poison, but you're expecting the person you're talking about to get sick. It just doesn't work that way. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28 says, a twisted person, the passing translation, Proverbs 16, 28, a twisted person spreads rumors, and whispering gossip ruins good friendships. How many of y'all have lived long enough to know that, 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 man, I lost some good friends over gossip, right? This right here already irritates me if somebody walks up to me and say, I heard you say it. Did you? 
That might even change the whole, that might even take it somewhere else. Soon as you said, I heard you say it. Yeah, you, that's what you heard. Let me stay saved, right? But this is what my wife and I have mastered. See, if you tell her something about me, boy, you better be accurate. And if you tell me something about her, you better be accurate. Because as soon as you come to me, the first thing I'm getting ready to say is, let's me and you go to her. Yeah. Okay. Right? And I want you to say everything you just said to me in front of her. Oh, no, I, I, didn't, I, I wasn't trying to take it that far. I didn't want to get into all of that. Oh, 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 oh. So then why bring it to me in the first place then? If you didn't want to know the truth, then why bring it to me in the first place? Because you were trying to separate. You all still glad you came to church today? Right? So, when it, so remember, now, my grandmother used to say, if the dog will bring a bone, the dog will take a bone. So the same person is gossiping to you about somebody else is gossiping to somebody else about you. Oh, that was a good place to just say glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Proverbs 18, 8 in the Passion Translation says this. The words of a God gossip, watch this. This is so good. Merely reveal the wounds of his own soul. This is in the book. So when a person does that, they're telling you more about themselves than the person they're actually gossiping about. Can I read that slow one more time? The words of a gossip merely reveal the wounds of his own soul. Watch this. And his slander will penetrate into his innermost being. See, so he hadn't, he hadn't helped the cause at all. He's only set himself back. Now, I was an assistant pastor for 19 years at a very large church within a very large organization. And so, and I moved up the ranks within that organization. And a lot of times when the more, the high-end guest speakers would come in, I would get those assignments, right? And so I was able to pick up a lot of people, a lot of names. I won't name drop, but a lot of people that you know. And the one thing that I noticed about each one of them was they never talked about people. And then when I would ask them, for a young minister, what is the greatest wisdom that, that you could share with me? It was interesting what they would say. Love God and serve the vision that God's given your pastor with everything that you have. Watch this. And don't talk about people. Right? And this was interesting. I remember one said this. He said, when you can't celebrate people who have done more than you, something's wrong with that. And I just never forgot those things, right? So, so if you always find yourself talking about somebody that's doing better than you, be careful. So the same wisdom that that person said to me is you'll never get there by talking about them. You're only holding yourself back. Proverbs 26, 20, the Passion Translation says, it takes fuel to have a fire. Watch this, but a fire dies down when you run out of fuel. So quarrel will disappear when the gossip ends. So what I've learned, if you won't partner to it and they can't find nobody to be a part of this clique, it'll eventually go away. Isn't that good? Now, what should it look like? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Amplified Bible says, Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others. So, so look for the good in every situation and find something good to say, right? Learn how to compliment people. One thing I know I love about my wife, she can compliment other ladies 
And I like, I love that about her. She can say, you're pretty. Your hair is so pretty. Your shoes are so nice. I love that about her. Folks, look for something instead of seeing the one thing that's wrong with the outfit and saying, I can't believe she didn't see that, that over there on that. Now, the shoes look good. The hair is tight. But how did, what, why would you put that kind of handbag with that? Uh, why can't we just ignore the handbag and, and compliment the shoes and the outfit and the hair? Come on, y'all. Don't, don't leave me out here by myself today. It's amazing how we run and focus right to a person can do nine things great, but they can't do this. So we'll go past nine positive things to get to one negative thing. Can you do me a favor? Look at the person next to you and compliment them. Come on, build them up. And, and that wasn't even enough. Now look at the person on the other side and build them up. Just say something good about them. Doesn't that feel good? Come on, doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel a lot better than talking about somebody? Right? Be Come on, doesn't that feel a lot better than talking about somebody? See, because talking about somebody not only ruins your day, but it ruins the day of the person that you're telling that stuff to. So let's people build and not tear down. All right, so use your mouth for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak, All right? So I want you to, I got in a homework and assignment for you this week. I want you to, every person you come in contact with that you're in relationship with, I want you to look for something to build them up about. Watch this, based off of their need, not yours. So in other words, you know something about that person, and you know it would bless them if you shared this and said this to them. Especially if you're married. Because, you know, in marriage, you just can get to that point where they ain't getting nothing <laughs> until they do this. Long as this don't get done. Come on, married folks, don't leave me out here by myself. Right? I, and I think married people should be building each other up the most. I, yeah. You think I'm cute? You think I'm cute, huh? Yeah, boy. Mama's starting to feel better, too. <laughs> Stuff starting to heal up just fine in there. She said to me on Friday, she said, I want you to get ready this weekend. I said, I don't have no problem with that right there. You, you think you're ready now? So I just want you all to know I'm, I'm back in the game now. I'm back in the game. And all the married men said, oh, yes. That was music to my ears, she said. I, I'm feeling pretty good. I want you to get ready this weekend. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Won't he do it? Come on, I said, won't he do it? Come on, ain't he all right? I know he's all right. I, 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 I know he's all right. Yeah, he is. Come on, let's get finished with this message today. We've got to encourage and support leaders. Okay, encourage and support leaders. First, our spiritual leaders, right? How many of those spiritual leaders have a really tough job? Whether you all realize it or not. You know, I can remember Paul saying that he was talking about all of this stuff that he went through, and then he said, on top of that, I carry the burden of all of these churches. And you got to remember, pastors carry thousands of souls around with them every single day of their life. 
that they're responsible for, responsible to pray for. And the Word of God says here in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, the Message Bible, it reads this way. It says, be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. Listen to this. Because they are alert to the condition of your lives and work under strict supervision of God. Now, what I want you all to understand there, if a pastor gives you bad counsel, God will deal with that pastor. You don't have nothing to worry about there if the pastor is off. But God forbid they're not. And they give you good counsel and you don't respond. It says, they, were, they are alert to the condition of your lives, and they work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership, not its drudgery. Because why would you want to make things harder for them? So if you understand what it's saying, pastoring is already tough enough. You don't want the pastor fighting with the people that are members of their church. Right? You all should be making it easy for us to pastor you. Right? By getting involved, doing more than just coming to church. See how, see how I just get quieter and quieter. <laughs> Having your own relationship with God. And then I'm going to go by this, but, but no, I'm going to read it. Natural leaders. Romans 13, 1 through 7. Be a good citizen, so spiritual leaders and natural leaders. Be a good citizen. All governments are under God. Insofar as there is peace and order, it's God's order, so live responsibly as a citizen. If you're irresponsible to the state, listen to this, then you're irresponsible with God, and God will hold you responsible. That's why we should pay our taxes. Get a legal tag on our cars. <laughs> Pay our bills. I know you all like, Pastor, when one of the assistant pastors getting back up there again? <laughs> Listen to this. Duly constituted authorities are only a threat if you're trying to get by with something. So you want the hookup. Decent citizens should have nothing to fear. Do you want to be on good terms with the government? Be a responsible citizen and you'll get on just fine. The government working to your advantage. But if you're breaking the rules right and left, watch out. The police aren't just there to be admired in their uniforms. God also has an interest in keeping order, and he uses them to do it. Now, are there good cops? Pray, yes, they are. Are there bad cops? Yes, they are. Are they good pastors? Yes, they are. Are they bad pastors? How I many know it doesn't change God? Amen. Right? And so we don't really paint one particular police officer with the same brush because of what other ones did. My brother's a police lieutenant for 28 years in the police department, and he is a good police officer. Amen. And there are a lot of good police officers out here. Right? Matter of fact, see, I can feel that. There are more good police officers than there are bad police officers. Right? And so sometimes what we do is we paint them all with one brush because of what a few bad apples did. And let's not miss the whole picture here. I love you, Chuck. I know he watches the service. Thank you, man. You risk your life every single night. It's for the citizens of Detroit, Michigan. Thank you, man, and I salute you for your willingness to do that. Verse 6 and 7, that's why you pay your taxes so that an orderly way of life can be maintained. Fulfill your obligations as a citizen. Pay your taxes, pay your bills, and respect your leaders. Right? So I just want to say this very quickly. I go to the city council meetings at least once or twice a year. And I listen very carefully to the mayor and what the issues are in the city of Powder Springs because I believe God has planted linked up church here to be a part of that solution. 
So I'm very keenly aware of what this city needs and what uh, that mayor is believing for. And some of it is already starting to, to happen. Powder Springs is getting its first luxury apartments in the history of this city. Watch this, being built right next door to us. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So that's 300 families that we'll have an opportunity to minister to and win that'll be able to walk out of their front door and walk right to church. Won't even need additional parking. Can walk right over here to church because of something he was believing for, that if we rally behind that and begin to pray, this city doesn't have a Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A cometh. This, this city doesn't have a Starbucks. Starbucks cometh. Right? This city needs everything that every other city needs. Right? And we want to make this a desirable location that people want to live in because they can do everything right within their community. The reality is there's nowhere for us to eat in Powder Springs. We need some more high-end restaurants. I'm talking about nice restaurants where you can leave out of church and go get something to eat at a nice spot. Right? So let's respect our leaders. And then I'm just going to close here. You all read number five. It's practicing God's method of conflict resolution. Folks, conflict is always going to be a part of our community as long as people are in it. We are not going to agree and we're not going to see everything the same way. The way you resolve that biblically is that when you have a problem with a person, you go to that person between him and you alone or her and you alone. Key word there is alone, right? Because that's who you have the issue with. And then you attempt to win your brother or your sister. If they won't listen to you, then you go and get two or three other people, right, and bring them along with the attempt to win that situation, right? If you can't win them then, then bring it to, to the leadership of the church. And now let the church get involved. Then the Scripture tells us if you couldn't win them, a group of two or three couldn't win them, and the leadership couldn't win them, then can treat them like a publican and a heathen. So in other words, it didn't say stop loving them, but treat them like an unbelieving member because everyone has made an attempt to, to win this person, and that person just refused. How many of you know there are people who just like conflict for the purpose of conflict? They're not even trying to get solutions. They just like drama. They're just people that are like that, right? And the Scripture tells you what to do. Let's close here. Let's all stand on our feet. In conclusion, I want to challenge you. What will you do to practice unity in your community? Of course, I gave you five things today. You can learn how to accept people. You can focus on a common purpose. You can control your tongue. You can encourage and support leadership, and then you can grow in your conflict resolution. How many know we all can grow in our conflict resolution, right? Soon as I think I've grown, how many know there's just some people that can just get us? Anybody have people like that in your life? Soon as I thought I was at a level, a situation showed me I got a long way to go. Anybody else in here know what I'm talking about? And I'm talking about it set me way back. This like just a couple, like a, two months ago. It set me way back and showed me, boy, you got a lot of growing up to do. Because, you know, when you come from an environment where fighting is an instinct and somebody fronts you, how I many of your, your natural instinct is the, what, boy? And I'm in a situation that I had no business being in. I let a person drag me all the way into it. This was just a couple of months ago. Your pastor, ready. <laughs> Somebody say, shame on you, pastor. <laughs> but guess what? You know if I still need to grow? <laughs> Come on, point to yourself and say, I need to grow too. Right? Come on, do it again. Point to yourself and say, I need to grow too. Do we all have people in our lives that just rub us and just, boy, right? And then our last challenge here is let's prove to the world that we are his true followers. So if there are true followers, then there must be fake followers, 
right? And John chapter 13, verse 35 separates that. It says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Not your ability to pray in tongues, not your ability to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, but the love that we demonstrate towards each other will prove to the world. So notice, the world doesn't want to hear another great sermon. They don't want to see a whole, they want to know, do you really love me? Do you really care about me? So the way to win the world is through love. And we demonstrate to the world that we're his true followers when we love them. Notice it didn't say the church. Folks, we must get outside the four walls of this building and impact this community in a way that has never, ever been seen before. The world is waiting on us. And I still believe the local church is the answer to the world. Now, I want everyone to look up here at me for a moment. You have a role and a part to play in this. That's why God brought you here today. It wasn't just to hear another good me message. God brought you here today to change your heart and to bring you to a place of a decision. See, the Scripture tells us, how long will you waffle between two opinions? If God be God, then serve him. But if the devil is God, then serve him. But that, that speaker went on to say, but as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And I believe that's all God is looking for today is for you to make a decision. Which one is it going to be? And whichever one it is, then serve that with everything that you have. Don't play with either side of that. Be 100% about what you want to be. If it's God, then live that with everything that you have. But if it's uh, the devil, then don't come in here and leave that, live that with everything that you have. But make a decision. So I've set before you today life and death, blessings and curses. Scripture says choose life so that you and your family can live. Do you want to be a part of this unified body of Christ that God wants to use to change the world? I know he's dealing with hearts all around this room. So if you're in here today and you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to pray with and for you today. Secondarily, you might say, Pastor, I'm already saved. I just got away from it for whatever reason. But this message today has really touched my heart and really reminded me I need to get more dedicated, more serious about this. So if you're here today, you want to rededicate your life to Christ or you want to come back to Christ, I want to pray with and for you today. And then my final invitation, if you don't have a church home, we believe every sheep needs a shepherd. So if you believe God has led you here and you want to join Linked Up Church. My wife and I, this staff, will pray for you every single day of our lives. And every time you come in this building, we'll make sure that you get the Word of God and the Word of God only. So now, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking unless you've been assigned to do so. I gave three invitations today. Will you accept the call? The first was to give your life to God. Have a personal relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus Christ, or get saved or become born again. Secondarily, is to return to Christ. You're already saved. You're just not living it. And you're saying, I want to return. I want to rededicate. I want to come back to Christ today. And then third, you're saved, but you're not a member of any church. You're just kind of wandering around and looking at churches. But God has confirmed in you today that this is where He wants you to join. If that's you, I want to pray with Him for you. So I gave three invitations today. First, to give your life to Christ. Second, return to Christ. Third, join Linked Up Church. I want to pray for you, but I'll only know that you desire that prayer by the lifting up of your hand. So if you would, right where you're standing right now, would you shoot your hand up in the air? Lift it up and keep it up as high as you possibly can. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, young lady. God bless you up there in the risers. God bless you right here to my left. Thank you for your obedience. God bless you, young man. God bless you up there in the risers. I believe the Holy Spirit is dealing with other people around this room. Never put off to tomorrow what God is convicting you about today. The Scripture tells us that today is the day of salvation. Man, I'm telling you, your life is getting ready to change for the better for the rest of your life. Don't walk away from this glorious opportunity. So if you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart, you know you want to get saved. You know you want to return to Christ, or you know you want to join this church. If you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart you know you were supposed to, would you shoot it up in the air right now? Just lift it up and keep it up. 
as high as you can. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you for your obedience. Anyone else? God bless you, young man. Thank you for your obedience. Okay, I want you all to do me one more favor. I see you up there in the risers. If you raised your hand that first time or you raised your hand that second time or you didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you still know you should have, would you gather up all of your personal belongings? Come meet me right down here at the front. Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they come. Come on down now in Jesus' name. Come on, Linked Up Church, come on. get down here. Let everyone get down here. Anyone else today? Anyone else today? Man, I see you, my brother. We had a major disagreement on yesterday. Major disagreement. Me and this young man right here. And that is, that's so honorable and noble, man. We had a major disagreement. so honorable and noble. If you don't mind, can I share that real quick? Without embarrassing. I'm going to leave it alone. That blesses me today. That blesses me today. Because the growth from two months ago to that situation shows that I've been working on that because that conflict was handled in a mature way that that person could still be here today and make a decision like that and receive from me. Is there anyone else in here today? Anyone else? Anyone else? It's not too late. I believe there are others in here right now. Come on, we don't have all day to wait on you. Who else is that? Come on. Don't put it off. God loves you and we love you too. Just take that first step. You will be the answer to so many other people that are waiting to do what you're getting ready to do. They're just waiting on one person to move. They want to come just like you do. They're just waiting on somebody else to move so they'll move too. Who is that? Who is that? You're not saved. You don't have a proper, you're out of fellowship. You're ready to come back or you want to join this church. Who else is that I'm waiting on? Come on, give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8. You all help me out around the church. Just look at a neighbor on either side, in front of you or behind you if you're led. 8, 7, 6. You tell them, I'll grab them by the hand. Tell them, I'll go down there with you. 6, 5, 4, Praise God. Come on, Linked Up Church. It's not easy. It's not easy. Come on. Come on, anybody else? Four, three. Come on, we got another couple coming right here. Come on, Linked Up Church. Come on, Linked Up Church. You can do better than that. Anybody else? Three, two, one. All right. Can we celebrate these that are up here at the altar today? Can we give God glory for them? Okay, I want each one of you to lift up your hand towards heaven because that's where your help ultimately comes from. And if you're watching online, this is your moment right now. If you want to give your life to Christ or you want to return to Christ, uh, I'm getting ready to cover both of these right now. You can do it right there on your screen. Just lift up one hand towards heaven and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died, rose from the grave, and he is alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I've confessed with my mouth, 
when I believe in my heart, I am right now born again and in right standing with God. And all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Linked Up Church. Give them a big round of applause. Praise God. Everyone that's standing down here, I want you all to look to your right, my left. See that young man with that Bible lifted up in the air? I want you all to go with him right now. And Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they go. Go ahead and follow him. We will not keep you long. Praise God. While they're heading out, I want everyone. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.